Hi, I'm Stephen Levy from Heat Outdoors. What I'd like to do today is to show you the internal parts of several of our gas heaters. Um, sometimes people struggle with what's going on inside them and I really wanted to show you the innards to these units and what the various parts do. So that if problems do occur, you've got a better chance of sorting them out. So what I've got on the table in front of me, this is the uh, burner section from a Goliath patio heater. And then just to the side here, this is the internal section of, of a uh, Athena patio heater. And as you can see, they're very, very similar inside. The main differences are in within the structure itself, but the burners are very, very similar. And what I want to focus your attention on is this section here, which has three main parts to it. This is the thermocouple. This one here is the pilot light. And then the one on the end here with this L shape is the ignition. And this is where the spark comes across to light it. And I'm going to explain to you how that works, uh, but also what the common faults are you might find with them. With a gas heater, normally people experience one of two problems. Either the pilot light itself isn't lighting, or the pilot light is lighting, but they can't get the main burner to light. So what I want to do is look at both of those issues and what perhaps might be the problems that are causing them. So let's look at the pilot light first. That's this tube in the middle here. Now the pilot light, once it's lit, heats this other little tube here, which is a thermocouple. And when the thermocouple becomes warm, it tells the unit it's okay, it's safe to let the main amount of gas come through. So it's essential the pilot light works and you've got a decent flame on there. Now the pilot light is fed from this tube here that comes in from your main gas feed. So if the pilot light isn't lighting, the most obvious reason is somehow there's a blockage between the gas in the cylinder and the end of this little tube here. So what we need to do is to go through that in stages and check each part to make sure it's working. So if this unit wasn't working, we couldn't get a flame on there. The first thing I want to do is, is it perhaps the spark that's causing the issue? So the first thing I would do is see if there's gas there, turn the gas on and put a lighter near to this nozzle. If you get a small flame there, yes, we know it's working. If there's no flame here, we again need to check the gas. Now, if we come to down here, we've got our regulator. So the first thing we need to check is, number one, is there gas in the gas cylinder? You'd be surprised how many times people have a problem, then they realize actually there wasn't any gas left. These things are really heavy, even when they're empty. The next thing to check is the regulator itself. So the regulators, we supply a regulator, but you may not have one of ours, particularly on your machine, but it's to make sure the gas is actually flowing through the regulator and up the hose. So what I would do initially, is put the regulator on, it clips in position. I would remove the gas hose from the bottom of the unit, and I'd then simply turn the gas on, and you'll get quite a fast flow of gas coming from here. You'll smell it very, very quickly. So you just need a little spurt of gas. Is gas coming out at this point? If gas isn't coming out here, then you know the problem's got to be somewhere either in the hose or in the regulator. The hose is easy to unclip, so you can blow through it, take that off and blow through it, make sure that's clear. The most likely problem in this instance is going to be the regulator. And they do occasionally go faulty, they're not particularly expensive, just replace it, put a new one on, and you'll be back in business. Assuming the hose is clear, we then come up to this next section and say, okay, something's got to be wrong between here and here. Now this is a very simple tube with a uh, little valve inside, and that valve's opened when you turn the knob. Very, very unlikely anything's going wrong in there. It's also very, very unlikely that this tube is blocked, but you can take it off at both ends and you can, again, blow through it and make sure. In this little section here is a tiny little valve. It's another piece of brass. When you unscrew this, it comes out, and in the middle is a minute hole, and that's the hole that the gas is pushed through to, to give you your pilot light. Sometimes that hole gets blocked. Now that can be caused by insects going in here through the winter. It's a very, very common problem. Um, anything, tiny little bit of detritus getting blown in there even, that can block the hole. With that hole blocked, the whole unit won't light. To check that, what we need to do is take a screwdriver, undo these two pieces here, take this piece out, and then just unscrew the individual pieces and look at them. Do a visual check. To look at the hole in the nozzle, you'll need to use a magnifying glass to have a really good look and see, is there actually a hole there? 
somewhere along that line, hopefully you found a problem. Once the problem is solved and you put it back together again, turn the unit back on, you should get your pilot light. The second reason a pilot light might not light is because there isn't actually a spark to light it. Now, with our gas test at the beginning where we put a lighter to it, obviously if the pilot light is lighting with a lighter, but it isn't lighting when you have it normally working in your unit, then we've got to look towards the spark that's not working properly. Now, there can only be a couple of reasons for that. One is if the battery inside the casing here has, has gone flat, but in any case, you should hear it clicking. And if you look here, I won't put my fingers too close, but you can see the spark there jumping between the end of the lead and the thermocouple. If there's a problem here, um, occasionally for whatever, I don't know how it happens, but sometimes this gets moved too far away and the spark doesn't jump between the two properly, that can cause a problem. If the unit somehow got damaged and the spark, again, some comes out the back here somewhere, that could also be a problem and stop the, unit, the pilot light from lighting. So once we've got the spark working and we know gas is flowing, we're going to get a pilot light. And what I'm going to do now is actually, let's connect it up and see for real. While we're talking about the gas hose, it's important to note that the amount of gas flowing through this tiny pipe here is relatively low, whereas the gas hose here is a nice, thick, chunky hose. So when you first plug it in, if you put a new bottle on or you've put the heater together for the first time, this tube is going to be empty of gas and full of air. So when you first push the button in here to allow the pilot light to light, it's going to take quite a long time because it's got all the gas has got to come up here and push all of the air out of this pilot hole. And that can take a couple of minutes. So don't be surprised when you first light your heater if it doesn't light straight away. Give it time, just be patient and you'll find the pilot light will light. Okay, let's test it. So the regulator's in place. I'm going to turn the gas on, come around to the front of the unit here. I'm going to put it into its uh, um, pilot light mode and start. And there we go. We have a pilot light. Hold the button in there for 20, 30 seconds. That pilot light is now heating the thermocouple. You can see it's just touching the flame. And then when it's properly heated, now if I let go of the button, you'll see the flame stays in place. Now all I need to do is turn the lever here and the unit lights. And when I turn it off again, I've still got my pilot light staying there lit, ready in case I want to light it again. Or of course, if I want to turn it off completely, just push it in and flick it off. Most gas heaters work in exactly this way. So this one is from a, uh, a Goliath patio heater, as I explained earlier. This piece here is from an Athena, one of the pyramid flame heaters. And if you look, it's got exactly the same arrangement inside it. And then if we go over here, this is the bottom of a Sherpa patio heater. And just underneath here, it's got exactly the th same three elements, but you won't see them until you take the burner unit out and turn it upside down. And you'll see it looks exactly the same as these. So hopefully that's given you a bit of an insight to what's going on inside these units and will help you diagnose when you've got a problem and of course call us and we'll tell you how to fix it.